Horse Haven of Tennessee is my heart. It is my soul. This is what I do. I volunteer for Horse Haven of Tennessee. Um, it's a pretty simple reason. I love horses. I always have. It surprises me when I see horses in conditions as we see here. I don't understand how somebody can look at an animal in their front yard every day and not realize that that animal is in trouble. I don't understand that at all. Everything we do on a day-to-day -day basis is setting precedents here within the state um, on everything from investigations to housing these animals and our numbers, which we thought would be about five, have now turned into as many as 146 animals we cared for just in 2010. We do a very, very small part of what really needs to be done, but you know, every little bit is a good thing. This is a story about Horse Haven of Tennessee, a nonprofit organization founded in 1999 to rescue and protect horses from neglect and abuse. Theirs is a story of mending broken bodies and broken hearts, a story of turning despair into hope, a love story. Good girl. Mwah. Meet Cayenne, a 15-year-old mare who was one of many horses being collected for slaughter. She has a happy home today, but it wasn't too long ago that her frail frame was covered with rain rot and the skin hung on her bones. When Cayenne came to us in November of 2009, she had a body score of about one and a half which means that her backbone was protruding, her hip bones were protruding, there was very little, if any, muscle mass on her hindquarters. Um, she was in pretty sad shape. I could probably tell you that Cayenne was starving just based on her condition. Unfortunately, Cayenne's plight is not unique. Hundreds of horses suffer at the hands of their owners. Many of them actually starve to death before they can be rescued. It breaks my heart to see how people can mistreat and abuse these magnificent animals. Horse Haven of Tennessee is an amazing organization because we can take these animals that are abused and neglected and help them recover both physically and mentally. Um, and then they go on to become horses that can be adopted and touch the lives of other people. The biggest thing that we see out there in the field is basically owners that don't know any better. They feel that horses can just be put out in their backyards on an acre of grass and that keeps them from having to spend time mowing and not realizing the horses require special care. They rely on us to feed them properly and give them proper nutrition and water. Because of their success in nursing horses back to health, Horse Haven of Tennessee has been named the state's premier horse rescue and its oldest and largest equine humane organization. But getting them healthy again is a slow process, and it starts with reintroducing them to food. We start off giving them just a couple of handfuls of feed at a time. If we feed them too much, too quick, um, they tend to get belly aches and start colicking. It is hard on their intestines if they haven't had food in a while to digest large amounts. So we start them very carefully and very slowly to try to avoid that. Cayenne was here almost a month and a half before she was up to full amounts of feed. And many more months later, Cayenne found her forever home with a large family that includes three-year-old Kenzie. Placing the rehabilitated horses in safe adoption settings is the goal at Horse Haven of Tennessee. When we start working under saddle, we evaluate horses uh, in terms of their reaction to tack, Western or English. Um, we will tack them up, we will put bridles on them to see what their reaction may be or lack thereof. And from there on, we proceed to under saddle work. When somebody applies for adoption with us, not only are they evaluated, their property is evaluated as well. We do follow-up checkups after six months and then once again after a year before the adopter becomes a full owner of the horse. 
Over the years, there are many horses who owe their lives to Horse Haven of Tennessee and the volunteers who cared for them. Lost and so alone, looking for someone to call your own. In 2007, they rescued two of Secretariat's offspring who were living very different lives than their famous ancestor. Given no food, grandson Riddle Star and great-grandson Rainaway started eating the wood from their stalls while standing in muck up to their fetlocks. After some time at Horse Haven of Tennessee, they now live in healthy environments with loving owners. Other less famous horses suffered similar paths, like Little Buck, rescued from a three-foot-tall chicken coop. It's amazing what braces, some TLC, and a new house can do. Most of them, you know, do come in quite underfed, um, and to go along with that, they're usually heavily parasitized um, and are gonna have um, skin problems from their malnutrition. One that will never leave my mind is we picked up four horses on a December, very cold December day, and um, one was a mom and a baby, and they hadn't had water in three days. They had nothing to eat. They were in very, very poor condition, and we brought them back to the barn, and um, as we were giving them water, the baby would climb up its mother's side to get to that water bucket because it was so thirsty. And um, that was the most pitiful thing that somebody would do that to their animal because um, nobody deserves that, not animal, four-legged or two-legged. In an effort to prevent abuse, Horse Haven of Tennessee reaches out to the community through important equine education programs. Who saved who to the world it looks like I saved you? Who saved who? And Horse Haven of Tennessee's voice of advocacy is heard on legislative issues and on other fronts across the state. I think the biggest problem we have um, that faces on a daily basis is basically financing. We don't have an income. We don't do therapeutic riding, we don't do riding lessons, we don't board. So we have to rely solely on our donors um, to help us to be able to care for these horses that come into us on a daily basis. 87% of our budget is used strictly for the horses. We have a very low overhead of administrative cost, it which usually runs about 13%. So we need the the support of everyone here in Tennessee because basically without us and other organizations like us, these horses don't have one anyone out there that's able to speak for them and get them the help that they need. Seeing horses come back from horrible, horrible condition to healthy, usable horses is enormous. It makes my heart sing. In 12 years time, we have made a difference in over 450 horses' lives. There's always more to do because every horse that is saved is one less horse that has to suffer.
Horse Haven volunteer Emma Hyder says it best with his beautiful poem. what you can to help Horse Haven of Tennessee help the horses. Go to horsehaventn.org for details. <laughs>